I wonder why chiff chaffs are called chiff chaffs. All oh, right. Got uh, very early berries on the rowan tree. They'll be big and plump and red later on in the year. Keep the birds very happy. And me, great addition to homemade jams. I had a feeling that spiker that was in last week's uh, video was all about breaking up the lumps prior to ploughing because that field has now been well and truly furrowed. Look at that. I wonder what he's putting in here this year. It's been an exceptional year for Jack by the Hedge, I have to say. I've seen so much garlic mustard this year. And it looks like the wind's got the better of this branch as well. Where's that fallen from? Off his old oak. Now that is a decent sized garlic mustard leaf. Look at that beauty, it's huge. Oh, just off. So low, this one. English bluebells, see how they're curved over like that? And if you look at the flowers themselves, you'll see that the ends of the flowers actually curl back on themselves. That's an English bluebell. And in fact, it's right here next to a Spanish bluebell. So you can see the, you can see the difference. See the Spanish bluebell grows up straight and the flowers, although the ends flare out, they don't roll back on themselves like the English ones do. Look at that, look. green, 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 boom, yellow. First buttercup I've seen this year. Not quite sure what sort of buttercup, Californian buttercup maybe, but uh, first one I've seen this year in a sea of green. Oh, actually there are a couple more over there. Oh, there you go, the buttercups are on their way. And our sweet chestnut tree, young sweet chestnut tree is in leaf with these lovely thick leathery leaves with the serrated edges and our first ever sweet chestnuts on this tree last year uh, which is about right because it's about 10 11 years old uh they weren't very good but it did have a few so with a bit of luck we'll uh, see some even better ones this year now cool little innovation here i've been saying to the trust that runs these meadows and fields uh that we should have a pond i've been saying this for a long time and there's one that's naturally developed from, as a result of the runoff from the fields where we get heavy rains, of which we've had a lot recently. And they've just cut through here. And uh, they've put in a pond liner, a big pond liner. There's the feed that comes off the fields. So next spring, tadpole hunting. It's going to be great for the kids, and it's not deep. That's the other joy with this. We're not going to have all the health and safety concerns. It's going to be just good for the wildlife and uh, no real concerns about safety. Let's put a smile on my chubby old face. So I fancied a snack. So I looked in the fridge and I saw I had about just over half a pot of um, Greek yogurt left. And I thought, I know, let's make some cheese. Now what I'm gonna make is something called labna, which is um, basically a soft cream cheese. All you do is you add some salt to the yogurt. Here, because it's about half a pot of yogurt, I'm using a very level teaspoon of um, salt. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that onto a muslin. You could use a clean tea towel. Uh, that's resting inside a sieve, which is over a bowl. Now, what the salt will do is it will separate the curds from the whey. Um, in other words, a lot of the liquid will come out of the yoghurt. You can see this is 10 minutes later and some of the liquid's already coming out. Now let's look at it half an hour later. And as you can see, the cheese has firmed up quite a lot. You could eat it now, but let's leave it a little bit longer. Uh, meanwhile, don't throw away the whey. It's really, really useful stuff. You can use it in lacto-fermentation, you can use it in baking, you can use it in soups. It's great stuff. 
Anyway, a couple of hours later, as you can see, there's quite a lot more whey and the cheese has turned into something approximating cream cheese. Still not going to eat it at this stage. I'm going to put it in the fridge overnight, let it firm up. Next morning, it's firmed up a little bit more with being chilled. There's a little bit more whey to add to my whey bowl. You can freeze this stuff, by the way. It's really, really useful stuff, full of protein, full of goodness. Don't throw it away. See what I did there? Now, I picked some wild garlic recently, uh, enough to last me a few months, and, um, and I froze it after I washed it. So I'm now going to take some of that out of the freezer. It's nice and easy to chop when it's frozen. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finally chop this up into very small pieces. Now I'm going to add the wild garlic to a bowl with my now chilled labneh. Give it a good stir. And it's ready to go. Oh yeah. Oh no, that is nice. It tastes a lot like boursin. Do you know it? The French soft cheese that's got garlic and chives in it? It tastes a lot like that. Oh yeah. I better go walk it off now, but first. Well, the sun's decided to grace us with its presence and it's turning into actually quite a nice afternoon after all the rain. So I'm going to go and have a nice long walk to enjoy it. Oh, lots of uh, wood ears, jelly ear mushrooms there. They are edible. They don't taste great. You'd be better off just drying them, dehydrating them and then grinding them up and using them as flavouring in soups and things. That's what the Japanese do. You enjoying yourself? It's nice after a bit of rain, isn't it? Everything's all fresh. And the smell of petrichor. The smell of the wet earth after rain. Lovely word, petrichor. Coming down towards my favorite little bit of bluebell glade. And my favorite oak tree. This is where the majority of the bluebells are here. And this beautiful, venerable old oak fillies, look. Isn't that fabulous? Get a better view looking the other way. Uh, how lovely is that? Late spring in a nutshell. Do the bib.